little Yorkies and the windows next to some drivers. And uh, the only issue with that is that dogs in the back of the bed trucks have possibilities of falling out. And the little Yorkies have the possibility of getting tangled in the pedals or distracting the driver unnecessarily. And the majority of the time, a lot of people take their pets with them because they think that they don't want to leave their pet alone at home or they just feel more comfortable with their pet next to them, whether a cat, dog, or strange other animal that people find nowadays. And like I said before, it hinders their ability to drive by getting tangled in the pedals or they accidentally grab the little Yorkie's head instead of the shifting gear that they need. <laughs> uh, and the one thing people don't usually think about when you bring an uh, animal into your vehicle is that they could possibly get car sick just like any other person. Unfortunately, the only difference between a car sick pet and a car sick human is that the, the pet doesn't know to peek outside the window. <laughs> And the thing that is important to think about is the possibility of getting an accident with the roaming animal. Unfortunately, this applies a lot with the physical inertia and such that applies to human bodies. The bad thing about that is when you have a 60-pound dog in the car and you get in a car wreck of some sort, that will be at least a hundred, maybe a ton of force applied to wherever the dog happens to land, whether on human, animal, or just the side of the vehicle, killing either the animal or the human or both in the wreck. And when you put the dogs in the back of the truck, some people do restrain them, some people put the collar and leash on them, like a lot of people would take their dog out for a walk with, but if the dog manages to fall out or jump out by some random reason, it will possibly choke them. And by, according to the American Humane Society, it says at least 100,000 dogs are killed in car accidents because they were put in the back of a truck. And a lot of times, everyone has that classic don't leave the baby in the car discussion. It's also important to not leave an animal in the car for similar reasons. The car gets too hot or it gets too cold, and it'll either boil or freeze the poor thing to death. And luckily, nowadays, we have numerous ways to prevent such issues as to having a roaming pet. A lot of times you could possibly keep them from getting car sick by going on short errands or just little short drives to keep them, to get them used to the idea of driving before you go on like cross country ro roaming and stuff. And they have pet cages as like the cat carriers and stuff with Belts. They even have harnesses for dogs that they could put around the chest and attach with a seat belt to keep the dog or cat in place. And my family, we keep, we don't put our 60 pound black Labrador in a cage since she's going to be way too big in a cab. So we stick her behind the front seat and the back seat on the floor where she is less likely to be a flying projectile. And if you have, if you don't know or you know that the building or wherever you're going to go does not allow pets, it would be better and safer to keep the pet at home where they won't overheat or be left alone in any unattended vehicle. And honestly, it is probably a better idea to keep the pet at home than have a furry, furry flying projectile in your vehicle. And thank you for your
every time. 